Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you a holiday inspired watercolor painting tutorial. I'm going to show you how to paint this simple watercolor and ink holly with berries, um, which is very festive for the season, which uh, Christmas is in about 12 days. So stay tuned if you're interested in learning how to paint some holly and red berries. So I start off by mixing up a bunch of different colors of red. I'm using most of the reds on my palette. And then I also start mixing up a few different green colors. So you can use whatever types of reds and greens you have or mix your own greens with um, yellow and blue. So I've got sort of a darker green and a lighter green. And I'm going to add some Payne's Gray to make a really deep holiday green for the, the holly leaf. Before I start painting, I'm just adding in with a really fine tip um, Pigma marker um, a few of the tiny little sort of secondary veins coming off the midrib of the holly leaves. Because the holly leaves are so dark green and glossy, it's often hard to see the secondary veins, but just adding in a few will give your leaf more shape and definition. Now I start painting the holly leaves with wet and wet technique. So I'm wetting the paper with clean water right now and I'm starting with one leaf at a time. You could do half a leaf at a time if you like. Um, I'm just going to do an entire leaf all at once. I'm using a bigger size six round brush and I'm using the really nice mix of dark green. It's a very holly holiday type green and that's a mix of the sap green and Payne's gray. Um, both of them are Windsor and Newton, the ones that I'm using. And then I'm just dropping in the color on the nice wet paper. You can see the color flowing and blending and all the lovely soft edges that creates. Um, and I recommend using um, some higher quality paper. I always use high quality paper. It doesn't have to be the super, super expensive 300 pound, but this is a nice uh, quality sketchbook with 100% cotton paper and you get really nice uh, flow and blending on better quality watercolor paper. And you can take a look. Um, I have a video on my top three choices for watercolor sketchbooks. I'll link that in the comment or in the description down below um, if you want to learn more about the sketchbook that I'm using and the ones I recommend. So now I'm wetting the other leaf um, next to it. As long as the leaf is not overlapping the one you just worked on, you can work on the one next to it. Um, the water I'm using to wet it is slightly tinted green because of the darker color I'm using, but I'm not too concerned with that because the highlights are still going to be light enough in the areas that I don't paint. And you want to make sure you get a nice even wash um, and don't have the water puddling at the edges of your drawing too much. That's why I take my time using the tip of my brush and then pressing harder using the belly of the brush to smooth it all out, making a nice even wash. And now I'm dropping in that color again and I like to drop the paint in in kind of the direction um, that the leaf or the plant is growing and then starting off dropping the color right into the areas that are the darkest out of the entire um, area that I am working on. And then I just sort of guide the paint along as the paper's still wet, 
um, getting it into all the sort of corners and edges that I wanted to cover and then leaving the paper fairly blank in the areas that I want to be lighter showing highlights on the leaf and you can see that from the first leaf that I worked on and I will be going in and adding a few more layers of paint to this so um, I usually put at least two to three layers on my paintings um, waiting for the painting to dry completely in between each layer and that is how I build up more depth and form in my botanical paintings. And now I'm just going around doing the exact same thing on all of the other leaves, getting the first layer of paint in on the leaf. And I'm looking at the picture um, that I'm using as a reference for where I'm putting the darker painted areas and leaving the lighter highlights. You can see here that this leaf is overlapping the one I'm painting underneath right now. So I was sure to make sure that um, the leaf over top is completely dry before I started on this one. And now there's that overlapping area and so I'm making the color quite dark where it's overlapping because that would be creating some shadow. Um, so I'm dropping in a really dark concentrated mix of the sap green and Payne's gray.
Now there's a few areas of the leaves showing the underside of the holly leaf and I'm painting those in with a lighter mix of the green which is more of the sap green with a little bit of um, lemon yellow mixed in and that's because the undersides of the holly leaves are lighter so just adding a few little spaces in for that before I do the berries. And I'm now using all those reds I mixed up at the beginning to paint these beautiful um, festive holly berries. And it's a smaller space, so I'm not worried as much about getting the wet wash on um, all the berries beforehand. But for the ones I'm starting off with right here, I'm using my smaller round brush and I'm wetting the berry first and then I'm dropping in um, the red color. I'm using a mix of Windsor Red, Scarlet Lake, and Alizarin Crimson on all of them. Some of them I use two of those colors mixed together. Other ones, I just use one of the colors. And it's um, nice to exaggerate the contrast in tones of cool and warm reds when you're painting a bunch of berries like this. It'll add more interest to the painting. So there I'm wetting the berry and then dropping in the color with my smaller brush. And I, again, am making sure I leave a nice bright highlight. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as the picture because this is more of a sketchbook style painting that I'm doing. But even if you don't see any of the highlights on your picture or you don't have a reference picture to work from, it's quite nice to leave a little lighter spot or even just a, a little white patch to make the berries come to life and give them more dimension.
So now that I have a first layer on the berries, I'm going back to the leaves, which are all completely dry, and I'm taking clean water. I've cleaned out and added fresh water, and now I've made a wet wash over top again, and I'm dropping in more color onto the first leaf that I worked on to create more dimension and darken up the color. And I'm still focusing on dropping in the darkest green in the areas where I've already placed the paint. As you can see, I'm dropping that color in those same areas and I'm still leaving the lighter highlighted areas um, bright and not completely painted over. And if you can see, I've switched the color there a bit just to freshen things up. And sometimes the middle of the holly leaf is a little bit lighter. So in that middle area, I added in some sap green mixed into that darker mix. And just carrying along kind of dabbing and um, almost stippling the tip of my brush around the areas by the highlights to blend in the edges so it's not so harsh but still leave that light shining through. And it kind of blends the edges and guides the paint through at the same time without painting over all of the white paper. So now I'm going to go around and do the same thing with all the other leaves. I'm going to wet the leaf with the clean water first and then drop in the darker green and also add in hints of the lighter green mix now to create some more definition, a little bit more vibrancy in some areas where it's hitting, with the, hitting the light on the picture.
I'm now revisiting the berries. They've all been painted in with their first layer and just like the leaves, I'm adding some more definition now. So I'm going along with the different toned reds, um, trying to pick three different tone of reds that you have would be great. If you only have one red, you could add a bit of yellow to one puddle, leave the red as it is in another puddle, and then add a bit of purple to the red in the other one. And that'll give you a bright um, kind of uh, variation of colors that you can use to make your berries come to life. And I'm leaving those highlights again, kind of doing the same thing I did on the leaves, stippling a little bit and just dabbing in the color to blend things in and, and make it look a little bit more natural, but still have that nice glow and dimension. And I'm using some of the Scarlet Lake over top of some of these berries to brighten them up um, since they already have sort of a, a bluer red on them for the first wash and it gives them a really nice glow. And there's the finished piece. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and you get some time to create a holly painting of your own. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for a new video every single Friday.